Hey everybody, this is Dave with Classic Gamers HQ. Uh, today I'm going to be covering the Nintendo Entertainment Systems CIC Lockout Chip. It was de designed for the American version of the NES, and uh, three main reasons why this chip was designed was uh, to give, uh, number one reason was to give Nintendo complete control of its software release for the platform. Uh, two, to prevent unlicensed or pirated games, and three, to prevent games from being imported. The CIC lockout system consisted of two parts, a uh, chip within the console that acted like the lock, and uh, the CIC chip within the cartridge itself, which acted like the key. Uh, the lock would check the inserted game for authentication, and uh, it would basically match up the chip with the uh, the game cartridge and give a code upon demand. If the cartridge did not provide the authentication, then the CIC chip would reset the CPU during every single cycle until the game authorization chip was inserted, thus preventing the CPU from booting up the game, of course. Now, the program used in the NES CIC was called 10NES, 10NES and it of course was patented copyrighted by Nintendo and only uh, Nintendo for obvious reason the CIC chip is a pain in the neck for most users and video game collectors for uh, the number one reason nowadays this uh, this chip is being disabled by game collectors is um, is because of dirty game cartridges. The contacts that do allow communication between both CIC chips in the system and the game cartridge, uh, they tend to get dirty, corroded, you know, whatever the case may be, and they just don't communicate. So you get the constant uh, reset uh, every you know every CPU cycle or every second. So there is a way to disable that. I'm going to show you here how to uh, how to do that and uh, have one less problem with your NES. Of course, the majority of your problems with the NES are dirty contacts and dirty 72-pin connectors. Uh, dirty or damaged 72-pin connectors are 99% of the headaches of the NES system. But if you want to take it a step further, you can disable the CIC chip and play pirated games, import games, or... Um, prevent uh, the constant reset because of a dirty contact on a game. This is the NES PCB mainboard. It consists of all of your ROM chips, uh, capacitors, electronics, everything that is the heart and soul of the NES gaming system. Right here I'm focusing in on the CIC chip. You see it says UIO CIC 3193A with Nintendo's emblem stamped right on it. Okay, The CIC chip can be disabled, you got to be very careful and the tools you're going to need are probably a very very small flathead screwdriver which I'm going to use in this case or you can use some very thin uh, kind of needle nose like snips or wire cutters. Uh, I prefer this method here, it's a lot safer. If you look we've got pin 4 here. Pin 1 is indicated by this little indention on the chip itself on the left hand side it's just a little dark circle right there you want to count one two three four connectors or pins down focus on pin four here and you want to disconnect this by prying with the flathead screwdriver away from the ROM chip itself we're going to disconnect it from the ROM chip bend it away and we're going to leave it connected to the uh, green PCB board. We're not going to cut it away. Uh, we're not going to tear it away. We're just going to bend it back so it is fully disconnected from our CIC ROM chip here. Now, be very careful with this. You don't want to damage any of the other pins and you don't want to damage this ROM chip. You will have bigger problems on your hands than just a uh, cycling reset switch. Of course I have a little difficulty here handling the camera and the screwdriver at the same time but uh, my LCD screen is helping me see what I'm doing fairly well here. Now you see the pin is about halfway out. I'm getting to focus here. The pin is about halfway out so we're almost there. I just gotta work at it a little bit longer. Get that out of the way there. Okay. 
Now before you get started on this chip, you can move. You see that little light and dark blue capacitor that's right below these this ROM chip. And there is another little resistor to the right of it that's uh, kind of light orange. You can very carefully kind of bend those back, not too much, but bend those back and get those out of the way so you can get started on this. As you can see, I finished up pulling the pin out of the ROM chip and just getting it, getting it out of the way. It's just kind of floating there now and uh, getting to focus here if I can. There we go. There's that capacitor you can move out of the way, the, the one on top there, the one closest to the ROM chip. But as you can see, I moved the pin completely out of the way there. And uh, now we have finished disabling our CIC chip. This is Dave with Classic Gamers HQ. Um, please stay tuned for more videos and uh, we'll see you soon. Remember, keep it classic. Thanks again.